Hello and welcome to Browse. My name is Angela Mirembe and we're here today to talk to some very, very vital ICT sector uh, organizations. And right here with us today, we have Michael Newman Biamugisha from NITA, Uganda, who's in charge of the IT enabled services. And we also have Richard Okuti, the National Coordinator for Netherlands Trust Fund. For Welcome, gentlemen. Uh, thank you. Uh, today we're going to talk about um, one of the things that I knew existed but didn't know so much about, and that is BPO. Uh, imagine I worked in Technobrain <laughs> in the training department, uh, and uh, I always heard that we had a, a sister department up there called BPO. But today I'm really glad that we're here to discuss what is BPO, what's it all about, is it necessary for us as the youth to know about it, why is NITA involved? And then we're also going to talk to Richard about the Netherlands uh, Trust Fund to find out how, what kind of part they play in the BPO services or IT-enabled services. So I think I'll start with you, Michael. Yes, what do you want to tell us about BPO? Thank you very much, Angie. Our, uh, BPO is uh, a business process outsourcing. Okay. It is uh, part of the wider family called uh, IT-enabled services. So what BPO exactly means is that uh, you're looking at um, companies taking a, um, a decision mm -hmm. to have certain activities that okay. were done internally mm -hmm. to be done by someone from, by a third party. Okay. Reason being that the third party can perform that particular activity better than the company itself or, um, and many others. Okay. Yes. So... Basically, what I get is when I was doing some research, it basically suggests that uh, rather than, I think it's what happened in telecoms, actually, rather than have 60 people work for you directly where you have to pay uh, things like their medical bills and their food and everything, it's much easier to get a team to worry about that and concentrate that's on right. your core work. That's right. um, yeah. I think uh, some of the telecoms even overseas yeah. are really keen on, on you here that you, you make a call, you're in the UK and you yeah. call for customer service and you're actually getting a call picked up from, yes. from India. So right. if you're promoting BPO services, yeah. what are some of the things that, or advantages that you're trying to bring across? What are you curbing? Uh, basically, we're looking at uh, main, uh, three main things. One is job creation. Okay. You see, BPO services uh, look at those activities that need a 24-7 activity, right. which you cannot do from uh, uh, the usual companies. Mm -hmm. Take an example of a contact center uh, for, for a utility. Right. Uh, you would want to have to be present 24 hours, seven days a mm -hmm. week, 365 days a year. Yeah. So if you have that service run internally, it means that... Um, you, you will be active between eight and uh, and five. Okay. And you remember this this is um, a service that is uh, even enjoyed more mm -hmm. after five o'clock. Yes. Take an example of television services yes. or, or water or electricity. So you want to have your clients serviced at all times. So one of the things we look at under BPO is mm -hmm. that uh, we offer service uh, uh, beyond the usual five o'clock, eight to five o'clock. Right. Uh, and because it's 24 seven, it means that uh, where would have had one person offering that service, you're going to have three people. Okay. Because if you need to have, offer the service 24 hours, yes. then you can't, it can't be done by one person. Absolutely. So it's employment and it's uh, once employment um, is, um, is available, then it means taxes for the government of Uganda. Okay. And uh, it means we are also chasing away poverty. Yes. Yes. Because that's one of the things, actually, yeah. I want to talk to, to Richard about. Uh, you as the Netherlands Trust Fund, um, you're embarking on the same project, I believe. You're, you're working hand in hand with NITA. And he's talked about uh, getting rid of you know, poverty. And uh, one of the things that I noticed is um, ICT is, is contributing to our GDP, although it's at a very low, should I say a low rate? <laughs> yes. uh, if I remember correctly, it should have been like maybe two point something percent. Mm. And uh, I saw that we're trying to strive it to reach at least 20% of the GDP. Yeah. So how, how, what kind of role do you play? Well, uh, that is a really loaded question, <laughs> but uh, I'll try and um, first I'll give you a background. Okay. Um, and 
how we came to cooperate mm-hmm. with the government of Uganda uh, to uh, implement uh, uh, what would refer to as um, uh, development uh, solutions to this area. Mm-hmm. Um, as the Netherlands uh, Trust Fund project, um, this is the fourth phase. Okay. Uh, the name is because it's funded by the Dutch government. Right. However, it's implemented by the International Trade Center, okay. which is one of the UN agencies. Um, and really, the role we're trying to play is um, to contribute to uh, increasing the capacity of SMEs, right. uh, women-led SMEs, youth-led, mm-hmm. and uh, the other SMEs led by men, and so forth. Right. To, um, we want to help them build their capacity to be able to trade in the global economy, mm-hmm. especially when you look at services and focusing at IT mm-hmm. and IT-enabled services. Right. Um, you realize that this is um, an area where it's still um, green. Yes. There's a lot of opportunities. Mm. Youth are coming up with a lot of apps. Yes. They are very innovative. They're coming up with what they call um, disruptive technologies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they can't sell only to Uganda, yes. but they could sell to the rest of the world. So um, apart from building capacity, we also introduce them to potential buyers yes. by connecting Trade. them to different organizations yes. around the world so that they can start trading and thereby reducing their dependence. Mm-hmm. Uh, they make more money, uh, they hire more people, right. and they contribute generally to the GDP and to the wealth creation for the country. Okay. Um, so far, yeah, is That's that a... Yeah, uh, so thank you, uh, Richard, for that insightful uh, discussion. Uh, so when I come back to you, Michael, yes. so now with the promotion of BPO, why Uganda? Why is Uganda considered stable enough to have BPO running in right now? Uh, thank you, Angie. We have a number of reasons why BPO is, uh, why Uganda is ready for BPO. Uh, the first being uh, we have, uh, our unemployment rates are high, yes. but we have uh, youth that are educated mm-hmm. and uh, <coughs> BPO comes into play because what, talk, what you're talking about is that we are getting uh, work from other countries right. uh, to be performed by our youth here. Okay. Um, there are countries that have benefited a lot, have used BPO to solve the issue of unemployment, mm-hmm. India being one of them, which we all very well know. Yes. Um, if you happen to call any of the of the contact centers of most of these international banks, uh, the person who responds to you usually would be from India. Why don't we see the direct benefits? Like, why would BPO work here in Uganda? What are some of the great things that would make it favorable here? All right, thank you, Angie. Uh, there are benefits uh, that accrue to the individuals right. and as well as the companies that do the outsourcing itself. Okay. Uh, for the individuals, of course, there is a job creation right. for the unemployed. Uh, for the companies that outsource, you know, BPO looks at uh, what is non-core mm-hmm. activity for that company. Yes. You give it to someone who can do it better than you. So you can concentrate. Me, you're talking about efficiency. Right. You're talking about having time to do other activities that are core to your business. Okay. Yes. So the employment section, obviously we know, I read, I think it was yesterday, was saying we've reached 83% and I wondered, you know, are we going to reach 90% by 2020? It's a very scary thought. But um, it's. It, I find it like it's a catch-22 mm. because at one point you're making people lose jobs mm. and at the other time they're being recruited mm. because someone might have a degree mm. and... Uh, well, they can't get the job for the degree, but they say, at least let me do customer care mm. for a decent salary. Mm. But then the BPO comes and says, you know, uh, we're offering these services at this mm. very minimal rate. Mm. So even the, someone who was thinking, let me get customer care, at least I'll get medical mm. benefits or something, those jobs have been swiped off. So what's the balance? Do you think it's the right way to go to bring BPO in Uganda? Okay, you see, if, if the, just to use your example, if the customer care activity is done in-house. Yes. It's going to be done between eight and five. Yes, oh, okay. One person. If, you, if, if you outsource that service, mm-hmm. that customer care, is, uh, that one seat will be, uh, will be done by three, three people because it's a 24-7 service right. and one person can't work for 24 hours. Okay. So the BPO companies will employ three people for that particular service. Okay. 
to keep it 24 hours. Seven. Besides that, in the industry, BP industry, there are direct jobs and indirect jobs. Okay. Now, when you employ three people, there, there are three other people employed that are not that aren't direct. I will mm. need to move from my home to come and work. That is transport. Right. I will need to eat. That is food. Okay. I will need to someone to treat me. Right. That is uh, hospital and um, healthcare. I will need uh, where to stay. Mm -hmm. Now it means I will no longer. If I'm just uh, if I've just graduated from the university okay. and I have a job, mm -hmm. it follows that I will have to leave my father's um, my parents' home yes. and go to my home. So so that is again also. Are uh, an opportunity for. So it's basically a ripple effect. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now that you've painted a very rosy picture, what are some of the <laughs> what are some of the downfalls or, or or the things that are stopping us as a nation from reaching that peak? You know, to to reach where Bangladesh is or India. What are some of the obstacles that we're facing as Uganda? Our, uh, the main one is uh, is culture. Okay. Uh, our graduates, uh, both from universities and tertiary institutions, yes. are trained to look at eight to five job. Mm -hmm. So when you tell someone you're going to work over the weekend or after five, it's a problem. It's my beach time. So you <laughs> really need to. We need to change. I mean, uh, to change the, the culture attitude, yes. and the attitude. Okay. Secondly, uh, BPO uh, requires uh, internet connectivity, fast speed, yes, reliable. So we have to work in that angle as well. Okay. We need uh, also other types of infrastructure, mm -hmm. roads yes. and power. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. So that we we don't have to waste time in traffic jams. Yeah. Mm? You know, we don't look at the man hours that we we spend, spend in traffic in the jam. jams. Yeah. But you realize that uh, uh, about four hours, roughly four hours, people waste you know, two hours as you're going, two hours as you're coming back. Wow. Yeah? So that is something we also need to work on okay. if you have this industry thrive. Okay. Yes. So, Michael, you. Yes. Um, I just want to take you back a little bit. You had talked about um, basically BPO removing the the unnecessary involvement of non-core uh, yes. issues within mm. the company. For mm. example, mm. someone. Uh, I use the example of customer care because I know that's something <coughs> I'm very familiar with. There might be other roles that you know are, are very easily. Um, replaced him. Now, there might be someone out there who's, who was actually about to graduate or who has just graduated and their CV has had on it, mm. you know, mm. customer care agent mm. ready to work. Mm. Um, is there still hope for, 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 for young people like that without being threatened by BPO taking away all their jobs? How does it work exactly? Thank you very much, Angie. BPO does not, is, it's not taking away jobs. Mm. BPO is as a matter of fact, it's actually multiplying the jobs. Okay. I'll take an example of, uh, of, of accountants. Right. Okay. Yeah. You may find that a company is not able to employ an accountant full-time basis. Right. Eh? Yes. In that case, you find that a company would like to have an accountant yes. on a short-term basis. Okay. Okay. And yes, we don't have individuals that you can employ on a short-term basis. Right. Eh? You have a job between January and March, and then you go away. Yes. Uh, the best option would be for that company to outsource that accountancy work right. to an accountancy firm mm -hmm. that has got a pool of a hundred of And they so don't have to struggle with the HR yes. looking and then exactly. agreeing, mm. what if I work three days a mm. week and, yes. and everything like that. Yes. Okay, I believe. There are certain activities that companies do that mm -hmm. don't require full-time right. full yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So those, those, those activities, you can, uh, they are best um, executed under the BPO environment. Yes. Okay. The other one that is non non IT is uh but all of us relate to it is right. security services. Right. You agree with me that uh, these days we have security companies yes. that we hire to come and guard our premises. Yes. Which never used to be the case. Back then yeah. we'd find that security people for these particular companies used to be part of this. Yeah, of the part staff. of the staff. Yes. Team. But yes. now when you want security, you run to security, security companies that we know around here. Yes. Why? Because they can do that work better than Okay. Uh, yes. Thank you, Michael. Richard, <laughs> I hope you're going to give me a, a good explanation as, as, as Michael has done here. So um, on your side, I know that you're, you're working with NIT as well in support of, of, of this and especially working with SMEs. Um, when you look at SMEs in Uganda, 
and their business thriving. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, if you're talking about BPO, at the back of my mind, I'm hoping that I'll have a business that's big enough to, to, to need BPO at one point. But when we talk about the businesses in Uganda and our infrastructure for trade and, and things like that, what are some obstacles that in uh, the Netherlands Trust Fund is finding? For example, what are some of the issues that you're tackling? What have you seen needs your eye or your assistance? And what are you doing about it? Yeah, thank you. Um, of course, you know, you can't solve all the, the challenges that mm -hmm. we experience. Right. Um, but um, we find ways uh, in which we can uh, address them. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, there are some of the challenges we address together with the government, mm -hmm. uh, including formulating strategies that uh, country level, national level kind of strategies yes. that will work on together and influence to to be implemented by different sectors okay. so that we can uh, reach um, a viable solution for some of the problems like infrastructure, yes. like housing, mm -hmm. government is building um, what we call IT parks or innovation parks okay. where these youth will go and work. Uh, this is something that we can discuss together mm -hmm. and then the organization, which is usually the government that has resources, mm -hmm. will invest um, so that we have the IT parks we can also work with government to tweak the kind of training that the youth go through in the universities yes. so that we prepare them for these kind of jobs. And these can all be included in a strategy mm -hmm. that uh, the project works on together with the government. Okay. Uh, and that's why you see the relationship with NITA is more strengthened in that way. Mm -hmm. However, we don't only stop at that. Then we realize that each uh, independent youth organization cannot work alone. Yeah. Not every innovator or every SME will run to uh, the foreign market mm -hmm. alone mm -hmm. uh, or go to government alone. Yes. So we create and support what we call trade and investment support um, institutions. Okay. Usually we can even pick already existing associations in the industry mm -hmm. to play the role, to increasingly play the role of uh, improving uh, the skills of these youth, uh, in introducing them to um, uh, to markets, and maybe even jointly offering a solution. Because one person may not be able to offer a solution, yes. but if you have uh, several people like this, they can work together to offer one solution. So again, through these organized groups. Mm -hmm. And then with them directly, we also train them. For instance, uh, when you talk about... Um, BPO yes. and working with other countries, there are certain standards yeah, that exactly. you have to have to reach a to an to, international standard. Yeah, yes. including even just communication on yes. phone. How do yes. you communicate on phone? Yes. How do you respond to inquiries? And so many things up to the technical standards. Right. If you're a programmer, is your programming well documented mm -hmm. that another programmer can, can come and see it, and yeah. start from where you stopped? Right. All these kind of standards. Then you may even have to buy internationally recognized um, certifications right. just to say that, you know, I, I, can, I can work at this standard because this certification has recognized me as well. Okay. And uh, so you find that there are several pillars that we work with mm -hmm. to kind of um, move the whole system up because it's really big including uh, taking them to foreign markets. Right. So to give you more specific examples, uh, the more younger youth who are just fresh from university right. are now registered by the Ministry of ICT okay. and National Guidance. We tap into that pool mm -hmm. to uh, kind of access innovators. Okay. And uh, these are, uh, you know, registered in different categories. Uh, those that are advanced in their innovations, right. those that are making it there and so forth. And we tailor support to those different groups. Okay. Then you'll find that the SMEs may also work with the ICT Association of Uganda okay. uh, and maybe the Alliance for Trade in Information Technology and Services. Mm -hmm. And as well, uh, certified by NITA, again, we categorize them in mm -hmm. different levels and support them according to that level. So you find it's a collective um, You've mentioned, you know, thing very working together. Yes. You've mentioned quite a few interesting things. However, I must admit that most of the organizations you're talking about, the people you reach out. How do the young people find out about this? Because everything you've mentioned, and we spend a lot of time with young people, 
It's unknown. Yeah. It's unknown. And actually, that's one of the questions I wanted to ask because, you know, you're working with, with, with big organizations, the ministry, the, the ministry, I mean, uh, ministry of ICT, NITAU. Now, what about, like, for us, like, how do we find the opportunities in there? Because we see young people being innovators. We see, is it just a small number who, who have this information? Where is it advertised? Because there are so many who would like to be helped. And that's, for example, why we're here. For example, in training, we, I understand, we totally understand what you're talking about. We have people who face issues with having confidence and things like that. Who does your training? Where do people get this kind of training? If you're talking about putting it in schools, is it, is it something that NETA is going to do? Like, what are the, the real practical steps that any, any youth watching today can wake up tomorrow and say, you know what? Let me go and, and, and really start my, my business. Oh, I've started. Because many feel stuck. Yes. They've been to incubation centers. They come, they sit, they spend their days there. But the movement, and I think it, it's worrying because that's, the employment rate goes, keeps getting higher. But then we, however many funds are there and everything, nothing seems to be tackling. So what are you doing differently? <laughs> well, that is interesting. And um, for your information, uh, and Michael may add something here, um, the ministry and uh, NITA are yes. actually quite uh, different organizations okay. in terms of how they operate. They have access to a lot of youth okay. through the universities mm -hmm. and colleges. Um, we also use a lot of media. Okay. Um, uh, that is uh, social media. We use uh, the print media. Mm -hmm. We use uh, the existing websites of these organizations and, and several other media. Okay. Uh, I think the biggest challenge is that uh, we now have many universities, yes. and we have, and there, there's a lot of media as well. Yes. So we need to f tailor ways in which we can make sure that this information Reaches gets them. closer to them. Yes. But more specifically for the NTF4 project, we tend not to um, reach out so far and wide. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, for the innovators, we use the pool. Uh, that already exists through the government of Uganda okay. to pick. And we don't pick all of them mm -hmm. because um, our main objective is to internationalize. So we try to get the, the ones that have developed a bit more okay. uh, so that we can expose them to foreign markets. Okay. And so we pick from those that have already been accessed by mm. uh, the government. Okay. In addition to that, we usually advertise, again, through several media, mm -hmm. so that when we are doing the selection, right. we, we again use a criteria which sieves out some of the leading ones. Yeah. Because remember, at country level, we want to brand Uganda yes. nicely yes. and get a niche market somewhere yes. so that we can start to get these buyers buy from us. Right. So at a later point, the, 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 the advancement of these top organizations companies and innovators will help also the younger ones come, come up. up. Okay. It's not that we are ignoring them. <laughs> but it's a process. To, Everyone yes. gets their turn. You reach yes. the top, you get yes. it. Okay. So we take them in stages mm -hmm. and hopefully we will. Uh, there will be a trickle down effect. Okay. To, to sum it up, I'll ask quite frankly, how, how long do you see this taking off? How many years? Months? Years? How long do we have to go before we achieve this great BPO goal? And what can a young person do to, to, to promote this? What would you tell them to do for their nation? I think, uh, you know, uh, in the space that we're working, especially services, yes. and when you talk about IT products, right. IT services, mm -hmm. and IT-enabled services, it can be one, it can be disruptive, meaning that it can take off immediately. And it can also take time. Yes. So we are working in a very unique time. <laughs> <laughs> that we can have something take off yes. uh, like, a, like a bushfire in very dry grass. Right. I'll use examples in our previous project, which was NTF3. Right. We had certain companies just take off very fast. Wow. And then others were growing in steps. Okay. Um, we, I don't know whether I can name a few of them, mm -hmm. but uh, we have companies like uh, Clinic Master, okay. which have grown and mm -hmm. have been recognized for their software that is used for management of, um, of patients in hospitals. Mm. Um, those have really taken off. 
And okay. I think even the public sector hospitals have recognized mm -hmm. that this software application can also work for them. Well, good for them. And remember that once government recognizes an application, it means it's fairly good. Mm. Because they really, you know... They have to scrutinize and yes. see the loopholes. So you have organizations like that one. Um, you have uh, organizations like um, Hostalite, which have started yes. schools and have partnered with other countries. And, you know, mm. they now have a product for... Uh, investment? For investment yes. called Cinnamon. Cinnamon, yes. In fact, I think they are called... The, the Cinnamon brand is now even bigger than the company. Wow. And some of these were just triggered, yes. you know. So, in brief, it can be disruptive, but it can also take time. Uh, but within five years, you should be able to see a change. Some change. Yes. Great. Uh, any final words, Michael? Uh, you asked about uh, when can we, when are we going to see this take yes, off? Yes, when the... Uh, my, my, my response is that it has already taken off. Okay. As um, under National IT Authority, we have the BPO Center, where we we bring in private companies. We give them a free accommodation, office space, free internet. Mm -hmm. the The idea here is that uh, if these guys come and have these these incentives, yes. then they, they will grow and be bigger. Okay? okay. We also have people who are who are doing BPO in their individual capacities. We 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 are, we are now seeing uh, a number of. Uh, uh, individuals in the different uh, uh, spheres, lawyers, accountants, uh, engineers, and um, doing work for companies that are outside. Yes. Yes, Uganda. So it, it's already happening. All that we need to do is just uh, organize mm. the people involved yeah. and give it um, more marketing. And that is what we are doing as NITAYU and uh, the BPO uh, area. Okay. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, the lovely gentleman from NITA, as well as uh, NTF4, the Netherlands Trust Fund 4. Michael, thank you so much for being here. Richard, thank you so much for being here. And thank you for watching. Once again, my name is Angela Marembe here on Browse, and we hope to see you soon.